subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Indian Star Tortoise. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Let's play soccer, Hero. Get the ball. Hey, where could it be? I saw the ball going in this direction. Did you find it, Hero? Hey, that's not my football. It's hard and smooth. It looks like a turtle. What a pretty shell you have. I wonder what kind of turtle you are. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, Mr. Turtle. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. This tortoise is an Indian star tortoise. That's a very suitable name for this animal. The Indian star tortoise comes from India, Sri Lanka, and parts of Pakistan. And, as you have noticed, the Indian star tortoise has star-like markings on its round shell. They look amazing, but what are those markings for? With the star-like markings on its shell, this tortoise can hide very well among grasses or plants. Their hard shells help to protect them, but they are still preyed upon by large birds and reptiles such as snakes. So Indian star tortoises have to hide themselves well from these sharp predators. Indian star tortoises normally live in dry scrub forests or grasslands. They can hide much better there. These places also provide the right kind of food for them, like grasses, flowers, and fallen fruit. Then we have to bring this Indian star tortoise back home, where it can hide and find the right food to eat. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Come on, guys. Let's continue on foot. Look, Leo. There is a man over there. What is he doing? Hey, he picked up an Indian star tortoise. Why is he running? Maybe he's an illegal pet trader hunting for Indian star tortoises. So he might take the poor tortoise to another country and sell it. Hero, wait for us. <coughs> oh, wow. There are so many Indian star tortoises here. I hope they're all right. Don't worry, Leo. A tortoise will protect itself from getting hurt by hiding in its shell. Luckily, these tortoises are unharmed from the fall. Phew, let's put them back into the container carefully. Hmm, now that we have so many tortoises, what should we do with them? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger Rocky. I see you've rescued many Indian star tortoises. Good job, Junior Rangers. But we don't know where we can find a home for all these tortoises, Ranger Rocky. Natural sunlight is good for the tortoises' shells. It keeps them strong. So if you want to find a home for the tortoises, just look for a dry place with sunlight. Not for a brave night or a pretty kite, but look for a dry place with sunlight. I see. So not for a brave night, or a pretty kite, but look for a dry place with sunlight. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find a home for the tortoises, you have to look for a dry place with sunlight. Good luck! Ah! 
Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be a good home for the tortoises. Is this a dry place with sunlight? No, it's a pond. So let's continue. What is this? It's a cave, so there's no sunlight. Let's keep looking. Is this a dry place with sunlight? It's dry. There is sunlight. And there's even tall grass for the tortoises to hide in. This seems like the perfect home. Great job, Hero. We're coming over. Enjoy the sun and the grass, little ones. We did it. We found a home for the Indian star tortoises. Great work, everyone. Yay! Yay! an Indian star tortoise in our garden. We learned that Indian star tortoises like to live in dry and warm places and that the star patterns on their shells help them hide in grass. So we found a nice home for the tortoise where it can enjoy the sunlight with other Indian star tortoises. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Equatorial Spitting Cobra. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it too. Careful, Hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Ah, a snake! Better keep a distance, Hero. It's a snake in our garden. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite, but a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spit spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away, so it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm, I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today. Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra. Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo. 
The venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into a defensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> <gasps> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. Did you see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. Phew, that was close. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the spitting cobra's home, just look for a hole near a stream. Not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but look for a hole near a stream. I see. So not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but, but look, look for, for a hole near, near a, stream. a stream. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. OK, Hero, to find the spitting cobra's home, you have to look for a hole near a stream. Good luck! <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the spitting cobra's home. Could this be the spitting cobra's home? Hmm, this hole already belongs to an owl. Carry on, Hero. Is this log the spitting cobra's home? No, another animal lives inside. Let's continue. What's this? There's a stream, and there's an empty hole under a rock. This seems like a good home for the cobra. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. Goodbye, little friend. We did it! We found the Spitting Cobra's home! Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found an equatorial Spitting Cobra in our garden! We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The green iguana. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Those are juggling balls, Hero. Check me out. Can you pass me another ball, Hero? Thank you. This is getting difficult. Ah! Oh dear, let's find those balls, Hero. It's a lizard. Whoa, that's a strong tail. I wonder what kind of lizard it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, lizard. Hi, Katie. So what did you find about the lizard? Hi, Leo. This lizard is a green iguana. 
also known as the common iguana. Some green iguanas come in different colors, and they can change their color when they get older. The green iguana you found is still young. An adult iguana can grow up to two meters long. Green iguanas are herbivores. They feed on leafy green plants, flowers, and fruits. Green iguanas can be found in rainforests of Central, South America, and the Caribbean. Green iguanas like to spend most of their time in trees. When they are high up in the tree, they can enjoy the sunlight. Sunlight helps them control their body temperature. Then we should bring our new friend back to the trees in the rainforest. Come and join us. The green iguana would love that, Leo. See you downstairs. This is a good spot for the green iguana. Enjoy, iguana! Let's hope this is the right place for it. Look up there, Leo! It's a hawk, one of the green iguana's predators. Why is the green iguana not running away? Green iguanas blend well into their surroundings. They will stay very still until a predator passes them by. It's too late! Let's use our propellers and distract the hawk. Oh no! Great move, green iguana! Its tail came off. Now let's get away from here. Poor iguana. Don't worry, Leo. Sometimes green iguanas drop their tails when they are trying to escape from a predator. This might help them get away. The iguana will even grow a new tail. Really? That's great to hear, Katie. Where should we go now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Green iguanas like to be near water, so they can easily jump into it to escape from predators. So if you want to find a home for the green iguana, just look for a tree branch that hangs above water. Not for a playful otter or a farmer's daughter, but look for a tree branch that hangs above water. I see. So not for a playful otter or a farmer's daughter, but, but look, look for a tree, tree branch that, that hangs above water. water. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find a home for the green iguana, you have to look for a tree branch that hangs above water. Good luck. <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots in your radar. One of them might be a home for the green iguana. Is this a good home for the iguana? It's a branch, but it's above the ground. Let's move on. Is this a tree branch that hangs above water? Hmm, no. These are vines in a tree. So let's continue. What is this? It's a tree branch that hangs above water. You did it, Hero. We're coming over. We found the green iguana's home. Great work, everybody. Yay! Yay! We found a green iguana in our garden. We learned that green iguanas like to stay high up in trees to enjoy the sunlight. We also learned that green iguanas like to live near water. So when there's danger, they can escape by jumping into the water. 
Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan Water Monitor. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah! It's a crocodile! There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they are quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. There are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo. What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone. Let's go over there. Here we go. happening, Hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the Jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. 
So, what should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers! Ranger Rocky! If you want to find the Water Monitor's home, just look by the water's edge. Not by a window ledge or a winter sledge, but look by the water's edge. I see. So not by a window ledge or a winter sledge, but, but look, look by, by the, the water's, water's edge. edge. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the water monitor's home, you have to look by the water's edge. Good luck. Okay, Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the water monitor's home. Could that be the water monitor's home? Hmm, this home belongs to those weird-looking creatures. So let's continue. There's a burrow. Is this the water monitor's home? The size of this burrow is too small. This is an otter's home. Let's move on. Is that the water monitor's home? This burrow is empty. It seems like a good place. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone. Yay! Hooray! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers.